Hello and welcome to another episode of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me Craig Barton. Now I'll tell you this straight off, if you have not heard of Clumsy Clive or been dabbling with these resources, you are in for a flipping treat because I'm, I'm, I mean, every year I do my top 10 resource countdown of the year around about Christmas, New Year time. And if this isn't on the list, pretty high up in the top 10, this series of resources, then it's been the best year of TES resources I've ever seen in the six or seven years I've been doing this because Clumsy Clive is flipping brilliant. It has been created by one of my all time favorite um, TES authors. Give that man a knighthood. He has saved me so many hours and, and helped me produce just some of the best lessons I've ever used. I've been using, using Andy's resources. But Clumsy Clive is brand new and I just think it's wonderful. And you'll see here on the right that if you like a bit of Clumsy Clive, he's involved in all sorts, simultaneous equations, function machines, error intervals, and so on. I'm building this up too much, but I don't think it, an anti-climax is coming your way. I think you'll be happy with this. So this is what Clumsy Clive is all about. Basically, it's a spot the mistake homework or spot the mistake activity but a really well thought through, really well structured one. So here you go. And this particular one's on averages and range. And um, he's doing his, Clive's taking his average and range homework and he and knows that he's made some mistakes. Can you help Clive? Can you spot and correct the mistakes? But I love this bit. Can you explain what mistakes Clive has made? Maybe give him some tips. So it's not just the case that students are asked to tick or cross. It's this bit. What mistake has Clive made? Can you explain what's going on? And then can you correct it? Now, of course, well, I say of course, I, I shouldn't take this for granted. Andy hasn't picked these uh, errors and mistakes at random. These are common misconceptions. So we see this first one here. Medium means find the middle. Of the, oh, sorry, sorry. Clive's been asked to find the median of this uh, this set of data. Median means find the middle value. So Andy straight away has gone for, uh, sorry, <laughs> Clive straight away has gone for seven there. So students have to weigh up, is that right or is it not right? They have to work out their answer themselves and put it there and then explain what mistake Clive has made. And Andy has kindly provided the answers as well. And we'll see there that medium, minds, medium means find the middle value and what mistake has Clive made? He's not put his data in order first. A classic misconception that kids are forced to face up to, address head on, correct and explain. And that combination, explain the mistake, Correct the mistake is such a powerful learning tool for help addressing help addressing these misconceptions that all students have. And it carries on here. Question two, find the mean of speeds of car below. Um, Clive's involved here. Add up and divide by how many there are. Well, that's sounding good, but look at that. 213.25, that's setting off a few alarm bells for me. Can the students work it out themselves? Can Then can they figure out what mistake Clive has made? And again, you'll see out here, Andy has explained that Clive, he didn't sum the speeds up uh, before dividing, meaning that he's only done 42 divided by eight. Now that's brilliant that, because that's something that I tend to overlook. When I'm thinking about what misconceptions students have with means, I'm not thinking that. I'm thinking that they're dividing by the wrong amount and so on. But of course, if students bang that sum there in their calculator as it is, laws of bid mass or bob mass or order, order of operations are gonna say that gonna, uh, the calculator is gonna do 42 divided by eight first and then add that answer to all those. Wonderful, confront the kids with that head on. Can they correct it? Can they explain it? And it carries on, it's double-sided this. And by the time your kids have got to the end of that, they've covered the vast majority of um, averages and range, addressing all the misconceptions. Wonderful resource. But, and it's a big but, Little word of caution here. Um, I've been, in, anyone who's listened to me, Mr. Bart Maths podcast over the last year or so, will know I'm becoming a bit obsessed with educational research. And there's been a fair bit of research into these mistakes in worked examples or spot the mistake style activity. Firstly, the good news is that these can be really powerful. To get kids to think about wrong answers and correct and explain wrong answers is a really powerful learning technique. So that's the good news. The bad news is it's slightly risky. If kids aren't comfortable themselves in what the right answer is, then there's a danger that exposure to wrong answers, as we're seeing here, can actually muddle kids up and they can, in the end, if they're not secure on what the right answer is, they can actually start confusing the right answer and the right way of doing things with the wrong way of doing things. But that's okay because that doesn't mean that this shouldn't be used. It just means you've got to use activities like this carefully. And for me, they're an ideal end of topic activity. I won't be using Clumsy Clive to introduce a topic. I won't be saying to my year sevens, right, I'm going to do average and range, correct these mistakes. 
I want to teach kids the right way of doing things first. I want to think through the examples and the practice questions I give my students. And then at the end of the topic, then I want to give them a bit of clumsy Clive. Maybe it'll be a homework. Maybe it'll even be a low stakes assessment. Or maybe it'll just be an activity within class. But I'll only be doing that after I've taught them the right way to do things. Because if kids are struggling, then it's quite a strain on their working memory to firstly try and figure out what the right answer is themselves then figure out why Clyde's wrong and then explain why Clyde's wrong that can get quite confusing quite cognitively demanding for students and there's potential that misconceptions can uh, result from that so just a little word of warning be careful how you use clumsy Clive in any spot the mistake activity my preference is to use it at the end of the topic unit anyway what a flipping wonderful series of resources is as I say get Andy a knighthood I'm leading the campaign for that and there's just loads and loads and loads of Clumsy Clive. So if you use that, please hop on, download it, give it a rating, give Andy a big shout out and a thank you. So hopefully he'll keep producing more of these lovely resources that we can all benefit from. And I shall see you for a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.